This is a short essay I wrote about Martin Heidegger and being and time. Martin Heidegger, aspiring philosopher king, Nazi supporter, Nazi denouncer, good guy, bad guy, kind to Jews, anti-Semitic, brilliant professor, devious corrupter of youth, champion of National Socialism, harsh critic of National Socialism. These are just a few of the accusations and praises that have been thrown at Heidegger throughout the years. At this point in time, it's possible we'll never know for sure the type of man he truly was, but I don't believe this should in any way detract from his philosophical work. The man did something that no other philosopher for over 2,000 years considered trying. He dropped a nuclear bomb on the history of ontology and then rebuilt it from the ground up. That in itself should be enough to greenlight his work for some careful investigation. In his best-known work, Being in Time, Heidegger expressed feelings on why he thought philosophy had been taking for granted the fact that we know we exist and why this subtle mistake had to be addressed. He noticed that our self-evident knowledge of being a thinking entity in a world of objects causes us to ignore being itself and therefore ignore the questions that should be the foundation for any investigation into a world of entities, objects, and phenomena. After Heidegger nukes ontology to stardust, he is left sifting through the ashes for a priori concepts of being. Heidegger didn't agree with the Cartesian sense of self. Descartes' cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am, didn't quite trace the foundations of his sense of self far enough back. Heidegger saw something more along the lines of, I am, therefore I must be. He took the position that's quite similar to many Eastern schools of thought, where a thinking subject is something that exists within a space of consciousness that could be considered the totality of the self, although Heidegger did not like the use of the word consciousness. I use the term and definition self and consciousness in a Jungian sense, the self as the totality of the individual, its full potential the expansive container that contains all individual subjective phenomena. I also find this self comparative to the self of the Upanishads. The language and logical steps he takes to reach this conclusion of a self existing prior to a thinking entity manifest quite differently within these two schools of thought, but Heidegger was concerned with grabbing the attention of Western academic philosophy, not mysticism, even though his concepts are rooted in metaphysics. The philosophical phoenix that arose from Heidegger's ontological Armageddon was his famous concept of Dasein, in German, being there. Although Heidegger attempts to strip this common German phrase of its casual meaning and instead assigns a simple yet difficult philosophical concept to it. Dasein is Heidegger's solution to the lack of conceptual ideas equipped to embody the essential characteristics, or lack thereof, of being. The development of this concept came from Heidegger's greatest influence, Husserl, who initiated the idea of Lebenswelt, life world, which was a phenomenological observation about life and existing as an entity in a world. To Husserl and Heidegger, there is no such thing as a world without an entity to observe the world, and inversely, there could never be an entity in existence without a world for it to be in. In other words, the distinction between subject-object was null and void. There could be no distinction, because there could never be one without the other. So, essentially, what Heidegger does is take Husserl's phenomenological method, injects it with philosophical steroids, and then applies it to the study of ontology, something he felt was necessary and extremely overdue. This is where Dasein becomes important to grasp. Through the development of the concept of Dasein, Heidegger was attempting to reveal the fundamental and unique state of being which an individual occupies. Dasein is distinguished from all other beings by the fact that it takes issue with being. Not only does this Dasein know, it knows that it knows, and so understandably wants to know the why and how behind it. Heidegger argues against the Cartesian sense of self, self as a thinking thing, because Dasein's existence takes place prior to the thinking entity asking the question, whether or not I am thinking a thought, I am here. Whether or not I am thinking, this is me, I am still me. Further, 
the general context of this being that we are, is to be shown as it is proximally and for the most part in its average everydayness. Because of this, Dasein exists not simply as a subject, nor as the world itself, but in a unification of self and the world. This relation presupposes temporality. The temporal nature of Dasein is explained by Heidegger through a tripartite ontological structure, which includes existence, thrownness, and fallenness. Existence is potentiality for being. Thrownness is the environment that one is thrown into, psychological, material, historical. And fallenness takes note that Dasein exists in a world with others and is therefore susceptible to their influences. The concept of Dasein, when viewed through a wider lens, is roughly analogous to the Hindu concepts of Ahamkara, ego consciousness, and Atman self in relation with Brahman, ultimate reality, or supreme being, all being different modes of the same being and being in the world. Ahamkara is equivalent to fallenness, there fallen, or losing oneself in the world of others. The throneness of Dasein reflects the Vedic creation of Atman, or being existing in the world as self, and Brahman is roughly analogous to the potentiality of being, existence itself, the raw clay of reality. It should be noted that Dasein does not exist as an entity within us, the self. This is the wrong way to view it. Dasein, from Heidegger's standpoint, is what gives potential for an entity to exist as something other than being, in our case, an entity that thinks and asks questions, which, in Heidegger's opinion, was the only entity worth investigating for answers into the question of being, because this question, as far as we know, doesn't concern any other being. We humans are the prime candidates for this investigation. In other words, Heidegger's concept of the true self is Dasein, which is not the thinking entity existing within this being in the world, but rather being itself, playing the role of subject-object world. Being exists, and as an existing being, Dasein has the quality of individuality, or what Heidegger called mindness. The thinking entity attaches itself to the mindness of Dasein, and concludes itself as the thinking thing. Due to the transparency of being, as it does not exist in the same way cars, trees, and rocks exist, or from the root Latin existere, to stand out from. Being does not stand out to us, rather, we stand out from it. Therefore, we naturally miss it. It is the background to every background. This ignorance of that background becomes our inevitable first step into Verfallen. While in fallenness, the knowledge of Dasein is overlooked, and we are distracted by the herd and technology. We then become susceptible to a life of inauthenticity, according to Heidegger. In addition to the tripartite ontological structure ascribed to being in the world, Dasein also has two modes, authenticity and inauthenticity. Once being is manifest as being in the world, Dasein, each categorical mode of its structure can operate in either an authentic or inauthentic way. Whichever mode Dasein happens to operate from is determined by the assumed separate subject's relationship with meaning and the world around them. Meaning, for Dasein, begins in the awareness of responsibility that one has in choosing an authentic existence. This is contrasted with a state of fallenness where Dasein has fallen away from itself as an authentic potentiality for being itself and has fallen into the world. One can become trapped in a state of fallenness in which, in automated fashion, one does what one should according to culture, customs, etc. To emerge from this inauthentic existence and conduct oneself in authenticity would be to take charge of one's life by making conscious decisions as to what one wants to do, become, and pursue. For many, distinguishing between the authentic and inauthentic wants and needs of this being in the world can be difficult. There's a trick for this though, as Heidegger points out. Dasein is characterized by its temporal nature, and because of this, death becomes a fundamental aspect of understanding Dasein. Although Dasein doesn't experience death itself, we experience death through others, 
we become aware of our finitude and the essential character of Dasein as being towards death, what he calls Das Nicht. Death is always a possibility for Dasein. Death completes Dasein's existence and is an essential contribution to our understanding of Dasein as a whole. In a way, Heidegger is employing something similar to memento more, remembering death as a tool for living more meaningfully. According to Heidegger, a being that is living an authentic life is a being that is remembering Das Nicht, or the reality that every breath, choice, and action we take is a step towards death. In the same way that a subject cannot exist without a world, neither can being in the world exist without being towards death. To be living means to be dying. They are the same thing. Remembering this is our ticket out of fallenness and inauthenticity, and into a world of meaning and freedom. <laughs>